Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we will cover modular programming. Modular programming is when we break a program down into smaller and more manageable functions or modules. It's usually referred to as divide and conquer. Functions are a collection of statements to perform a task. There are many reasons why we prefer modular program, but let me tell you the two most important motivations behind modular programming. The first is to improve maintainability of our programs. In other words, it's much easier to debug, make changes, and in general, maintain our programs. And the second motivation is code reusability, which is huge in programming. This will result in simplification of the process of writing the program. In other words, you can reuse the code that you've already written over and over and over again. So let's look at what does this really mean. Let's say if you have the following program, which contains all of these statements to solve a problem. Utilizing functional programming, we can break this down into smaller functions and call each function from our main program. Now let's talk about how we can implement this into our program. To implement function into our program, we need to start with function definition. Function definition is composed of function header, curly braces, and the function body, which is a bunch of statements that perform a task. Function's header is composed of the returning type, name of the functions, and our parameters enclosed within open and closed parentheses. Here is an example. This is the definition of a function for function add. It simply starts with int, which is the type, followed by the name of the function, which in this case is add, followed by our parameters, which are int a and int b. Since we're using our int a and int b as a parameter, we no longer need to define it inside of our function. Since it's a returning type function, all I need to do is now write return a plus b, and of course semicolon since it's a statement. I don't even need to allocate memory for third variable to save a and b anymore. This was a returning type function, and we know that because the function starts with a data type int. When a function starts with a type, we call a returning type function, and we must have the return statement within the body of our function. If our function's header starts with void, it indicates that it is not a returning type function, and we no longer have to use the return statement in the body of our function. Now let's try to write the same function as a void function, and I'm going to call it sum so we don't confuse it with our last function. As you can see, this is a void function, it starts with void sum, and we're going to have our parameters int a, int b, and we're going to have a simple C out statement um, that calculates the sum a plus b. Now inside of our program, which I will show you guys in a little bit right now, uh, you're going to see how we're asking the user to input those a and b for us. Now let's look at this program as an example. In this program, we have three different functions. One function will add two numbers, one other function will subtract two numbers, and the last function will multiply two numbers given by the user. At the end of the program, the program will ask the user if they'd like to repeat the program or not, and it will be executed accordingly. Let's go line by line through this code to understand it better. Of course, we're going to start with our preprocessor directives. We're going to include IO stream. I'm including IO manip, which is input output manipulation library, because I want to separate my output by stars. I'm going to be using set fill and set w throughout this program, and that's the reason I'm including that line, that preprocessor directives. I'm using a standard namespace in this program. And let me show you guys something at the bottom of the program. So um, right after the namespace, I have some prototypes, which I'm going to go over in a minute. But at the bottom of the program, right after I close the main curly braces, I have the functions. These are the three functions that I have in this program. We have a sub function for subtraction. We have a, a sum function that we're going to be adding two numbers. And we have a multiplication number um, function that we're going to be multiplying two numbers. If you look at it, the very first function is a value returning type function. It's a return type function. It starts with an int. The second function is a void function. And then the last function, we have some referencing, um, passing by reference, which I'm going to go over in a minute. 
And here are our prototypes. Prototypes are our way of telling compiler that we are referring to function within the body of this main that are listed after the main function. It is very important to note that if you have your functions after the main, like the way I have over here, you must list the prototypes before main. Otherwise, we will get an error. If you decide to list your functions before your main function, then you don't need to list any prototypes. Now we have our main followed by the definition of our variables. I'm utilizing do while in this program so I can ask the user if they want to repeat the program or not at the end of the program. Next, let's call our first function. We'll start by asking the user to input two numbers and once the user see in x and y in this case, we will be calling the function within our cout statement. Here's the syntax as to how you're going to be calling the function. We're going to start by sub which is the name of our function, and x, comma, y, which are the values I am passing as an argument. This is called passing by value, which means I'm passing a copy of the value as an argument um, through this program. I didn't put the prototypes and the functions in order to show you guys that they are not, it's not really important, the order, it doesn't matter. What really matters is to assure that the number of parameters and types matches the number of arguments and its type. Notice, my local variables for my function are different than the variables in my main, and that's because they're standalone. Um, again, what really matters is that the number of parameters and types for each function matches its pertaining number of arguments and their types. Moving on to the rest of the program, if you notice, uh, we're going on to a set field and set w, which is going to uh, print some stars for us to just separate the uh, output for this program. And later on, we're asking the user to input two other numbers. This time, we are uh, trying to find out what is going to be the calculation, uh, the sum of two numbers. And we're going to be pulling the sum functions. We're calling it into our main and our sum function down here uh, just it's a simple see out statement it's a void function there is no return type and uh, a simple see out statement that uh, tells the user what is uh, the result of the sum of a plus b and then moving on to the next function which is a multiplication this is passed by reference if you notice the and sign in there that and sign references the uh, instead of getting a copy of the value it actually points to the address in the memory and it says regardless of what value it's in there that's the information I want whatever is lo it's located in this particular uh, memory slide is what I want and that's basically what the difference is between uh, passing by reference or passing by value and of course over here we're calling it I have double mult result equal mult uh, A and B, and that's basically um, another way of calling a function. I just created a variable to save the result, and then um, a simple C out statement that I am printing out what would be the multiplication result. And uh, at the end of the program, I'm asking the user if they want to repeat the program or not and if they say yes then the whole program it's gonna start again let's run this program very quick I'm gonna do an F5 um, to run this program and we're gonna check and see the output and how this program is gonna work so here is the output console it's asking me for two numbers I'm gonna be putting two numbers in here it gives me the result first one is the subtraction and then the next one it's gonna ask me for another two number I'm putting that on and this is the sum um, and the last one is gonna ask me for multiplication for two numbers I'm gonna put two numbers in here and then it's asking me if you want to repeat the program if I put Y in here then it's gonna repeat it and it's gonna ask me for another two number and the program is gonna continue. This will conclude this video tutorial. I hope this helped you understand the modular programming basics and how you can implement it into your program.